good morning from a grim, wet Dnipro. It started raining last night and I think it's rained throughout the night. I just tried to come out about half an hour ago and it was still absolutely bouncing down. See, this is a nightmare trying to cross it, this one, because it's just flooded. Anyway, the rain appears to have stopped for now. I thought I'd take myself out and have a look around the city of Dnipro. Well, as you can see, it's sort of throwing it down with rain again. The weather's not improved any, so I think I'm going to end my explorations for today. Go back to the hostel and uh, just chill out for a bit. I've looked at the weather forecast and tomorrow is supposed to be uh, much nicer. No rain for a start. So I'm going to do all my explorations tomorrow. And there is uh, quite a few interesting things to go and look at. It just doesn't seem worth getting soaked and doing it now in this grim weather. Good morning and welcome to day two in Dnipro where as you can see there's no rain we've even got the sun. Today I'm going to do all the things that I planned to do yesterday. Got a lot to cram in today there's a lot of interesting stuff in Dnipro. It's a city with a very interesting history. I'll tell you more about the history of the city as we reach some of the places that I'm heading to. My first stop is about 24 minutes walk away. In July 1944, the State Ministry of Defence in Moscow decided to build a military machine making factory here in Dnipro. In December 1945, thousands of German prisoners of war began work on the new factory. Stalin suggested secret training for highly qualified engineers and scientists to become rocket construction specialists. Hundreds of engineers and machine designers moved from Moscow and other Soviet cities to Dnipro. This factory was called Yuzhmash. In 1951, the factory began producing rockets for the battlefield. The first rockets produced here had a range of just 270 kilometers. During the 1960s, the rockets that were produced here were practically without limits. The rocket engines produced in Dnipro were used for the first Soviet spaceships. Officially, the factory was producing tractors and special kitchen equipment. There was no information about the production of rockets or spaceships. Such was the secrecy surrounding the factory. From 1959, Dnipro became a closed city, meaning that no foreign citizen could enter not even people from other Soviet countries. It remained closed until 1987. And when you consider just how many rockets and missiles were produced in this city, you might be thinking, what happened to them all? Well, three of them are right here. naturally gravitate towards the uh, biggest one, the Cyclone 3. Take some power to get this thing off the ground. Amazing. It's got the name of the factory on the top. Yushmash. It weighs 189,000 kilograms, so 189 tons. Dnipro's off to a good start, isn't it? It's not often you come right up close to a huge rocket missile. I've just walked away from the space missiles and uh, it's brought me to this park which is quite a nice park could do with a bit of an upgrade the children's playground has seen better days perhaps needs a look of paint over here we've got a railway which goes all around the park two kilometers distance goes through a couple of tunnels i just walked along this bridge down there and looked down here but on the other side 
Wait till you see this. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I've looked on Google Maps and it doesn't say anything about it. This is actually, it looks like a concert hall. You can see the chairs. It looks like the one in Chenevsi actually. Well, this is just a beast. Look at that. Don't know if, uh, if it's still in use. Can't see any posters for any coming events. I'm heading now to the Dnieper River and on the way there's a real interesting building that I actually only found out about this morning. I would have probably spotted it anyway because this is the the route that I would have taken from the park to get to the river. It's just coming into view now and wow I'm gonna hope I can get a closer look. This building was a project of the Soviets and construction on this building took place between 1975 and 1989 and then due to the end of uh, communist rule in Ukraine it just got abandoned and it was never completed it never opened check that out 14 years of construction to build this big hotel and not a single person ever stayed there that's incredible What an absolute beast and it's right on the banks of the river now you used to be able to get in but there were a number of uh, suicides uh, took place and so now it's all kind of fenced off and barbed wire and i do believe that there are even packs of dogs that roam so if you scale the fence chances are you're going to get ripped apart by a group of angry dogs looking at some information online about this abandoned hotel and they can't do anything with it they couldn't carry on the work because it doesn't comply with uh, health and safety standards so the building wouldn't be able to be opened anyway it's strange that it's still here now i can't see any signs of packs of angry dogs but there were enough reviews on google maps mentioning packs of dogs to make me think that it's not worth actually going in well oh, right on cue yep there are definitely dogs in there they don't look like the most scary dogs to be honest but there's quite a few of them And they're obviously doing a job. Here we are then, down at the Dnieper River, from which the city gets its name. To be honest, I was kind of expecting a bit of a waterfront going on down here. Maybe cafes and bars and restaurants. <laughs> I've seen prettier waterfronts to be honest. Although, this looks cool. I like this. Look at that beauty. It's actually a restaurant. It says Music Hall Poblavok. Poblavok, I think that says. Well, look at that for a lovely old bench. It's called Bottle Tops. few people uh, taking photos in here as well. No pain, no gain, Dnipro. And this here. 
I've seen this a lot around this area, make it nice. Because the potential when you think, you know, you've got this big riverfront, you could have, have cafes and bars and restaurants along here. It could be very nice. But as it stands, it's just a bit, a bit of a mess. Maybe that's what these used to be. Maybe they used to be restaurants and bars. I really like Dnipro. I had a good feeling about it on the first night when I found the craft beer bar and I ended up having a drink with uh, one of the locals in there and that was uh, a good night. And then yesterday I just got a feeling the city was alive even though it was just throwing it down with rain and I had to cut my uh, exploration short. I just got a, a, a good vibe about the place. It's a very interesting city. It looks like on this stretch there used to be restaurants maybe there's nothing in any of these places so I don't know whether they just closed for the season or whether they just closed down completely the guy at the uh, hostel told me not to come to eat at any of these places Apparently they're uh, very high prices, bit of a tourist trap. But none of them look open anywhere, there's no tables inside. Well, look at that beast. Check this place out. Respiratin Club opens at 8 while 6 in the morning. I don't know if it's still open. Some brutal architecture there. And over here we've got a lovely old Soviet circus and a babushka carrying two gnomes. Apparently this lights up at night. It's a good place to get a 360 of the city. And my next stop is this island over here. I'm not sure what I'm going to discover there. I don't know if there's anything to discover there. All I know it's an island. So let's go and have a look. I'm just reaching the bridge now to take me over onto the island. And uh, there seems to be some kind of abandoned theme park. A couple of restaurants, snack bars that have uh, closed down. And what this is up here, well, this looks interesting. Take that beauty out. So this is the bridge going over onto a monastery island, which I'm presuming gets its name because of this over here. Got all the fishermen down there. Oh, one's just got a catch. It all looks very run down and abandoned. I can't work out whether everything's just closed for good or whether it's just closed because it's out of season. This building down here looks kind of modern. I mean this is definitely not open because there's no tables or chairs or anything. That's definitely not opening anytime soon.
Right at the north end of the uh, island, we have this monastery. A very old fashioned bell tower there as well. Now, does this mean I can open or not? Well, believe it or not, the Ferris wheel is actually moving. There's actually someone on it. Surely it's got to go faster than that. It's not abandoned, but it still has that creepy vibe when you come to a fairground that's completely empty. Like a death trap. <laughs> what have we seen so far today? We saw the uh, rockets. And then what did we see? We saw the abandoned fair and the old Soviet concert hall. Then we saw the old abandoned hotel. Didn't expect to find a beach. <laughs> Dnipro is the city that's just got it all. I can't work out. Maybe during the summer, I would imagine that this is really busy. People will come here and they'll sunbathe. It's nice. You know, it looks like a nice enough beach once it's clean, been cleaned up a bit. Maybe go for a swim in the river. And these bars here that will be open, there's a lot that look like they've not been open for years. But this looks alright, doesn't it? Nice place for the Dniproans to come and relax and pretend they're on holiday. Doesn't look too bad, the water, actually. I was thinking you perhaps don't want to go paddling in uh, the river but it looks clean enough. I can't believe I'm on a beach. <laughs> That's mad. Dnipro you spoil me. Should have bought my trunks. I've just looked at Google Maps and this island and this beach goes on forever <laughs> and to be honest I don't think there's going to be much else to look at other than what I'm seeing now. This is the last major thing on the map, this uh, aquarium, which I actually think, at first I thought it was closed, but now I'm looking and I think it actually might be open. I've just looked on Google Maps and the reviews of this place say that it's an old Soviet era aquarium and uh, it's not changed at all since uh, Soviet times. One guy said he used to come here as a kid in the 70s and he came back here recently and it's exactly the same, even down to the uh, rude babushka that sold him his tickets. So I think it's 50 to get in. So I think I should go and have a look, shouldn't I? Even just for the building. My first time in a Soviet style aquarium. Uh, Oh, bloody hell, there's an actual crocodile in there. Wasn't expecting that. I think this room is basically it. So we've got the fish tanks down the side and the uh, fish tanks down the other side and then there's this part here which you can walk in and see the fish all around you. I'm not sure whether you can go up. Um, the, the building's uh, really, really cool and I love the lights. I don't know what it was about the uh, Soviet Union and their crazy lights, like the ones in the metro stations. 
This guy doesn't appear to have a great deal of room. Look at this happy looking chap. Translucent, you can see through them. All right, let's go in here then. Fish tanks so uh, dirty, I can barely see. This is a little bit better. You've got fish on the bubbles as well. That tank doesn't look like it's been cleaned since Soviet era. Check out the Soviet bathroom. Look at that. I mean, would you? <laughs> the old Soviet hand dry. What a beauty. Look at that. What an experience that was. <laughs> to be honest, uh, the fish didn't look like they got much room. The bigger ones looked like they were struggling a bit and the tanks didn't look the cleanest. It's a cracking old building though. I think the highlight for me was the toilet with the uh, partition between the two uh, toilets and, um, and the Soviet hand dryer. <laughs> just walking away from the aquarium and a guy was shouting what I thought was his dog and, but then the, the dog started appearing and then another dog and then another dog and then they started walking past me they seemed friendly and then bloody hell all three of them started having a go at me like barking and being really aggressive anyway the guy shouted them and uh, shouting at them really like kind of aggressive towards them and they all ran out of the park so oh, i think they're strays and they're not supposed to be in it <laughs> so uh if i see any strays in this park i can't necessarily presume that they're going to be friendly not like the old dogs at chernobyl they were lovely buggers then weren't they i've got to admit I really enjoyed my time in Dnipro. There's so much bizarre things to go and do, so it's definitely worth a couple of nights on your Ukrainian itinerary. And uh, so that will be it now for my time in this city. Tomorrow I'm taking my first Ukrainian night train. I'm going to get on a train at around about half past seven tomorrow night, and that's going to take me to Odessa where I'll arrive at about half past six in the morning. So that should be an experience. When I booked it, there was just me in my little room. There's four beds, uh, two on the bottom, two on the top. Just me when I booked it. I'm guessing that's not going to be the case. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. That should be an interesting experience. So that's me in Dnipro. I'll see you in Odessa.